Hi, fam. Welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. And we're back with another reaction. It's another pitch meeting in the MCU. Which one is this, Dan? We are watching Spider-Man No Way Home. I imagine there's nothing wrong with this, but they found something. <laughs> so let's go see what it is. Cheers to you, fam. Enjoy. So, you have a Spider-Man sequel for me? Yes, sir, I do. The third entry in the, I guess, home trilogy. Yeah, it seems like we decided that was a thing at a certain point. So what happens in this movie? Well, now Peter is super famous because Mysterio revealed his identity in the last movie, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so his world's turned upside down. The media's all over him and his friends. That Flash guy writes a whole book about it. Oh, boy. And there are also some legal troubles involved. So they, get this, they get Matt Murdock in. Charlie Cox. He's from the Netflix show. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> oh boy, it doesn't get much crazier than that. <laughs> oh, you have no idea. Well, that's rude. No, that's... I have idea. <laughs> no, so check this out. I was thinking we get Andrew Garfield to come in as Spider-Man from another universe. Oh. Yeah, I mean, he's great. Okay, I <laughs> That's was all I had to say. a bigger reaction than that. But also, we get Tobey Maguire in as Spider-Man too. Good actor. Sure. <laughs> It's the OG, it's man. Like Come Toby on. Toby McGuire. I did love Seabiscuit. That was great. <laughs> Not Seabiscuit is tight. Sir, they both played Spider-Man before. Oh, did they? Yeah, in other movies, they... Oh, I don't... I guess I missed those. I... Wow. Really? I mean, I have no recollection, but the movie will still work, right? I... Uh... <laughs> I guess. Okay, great. So let's hear it. I... Uh... Okay, uh... I mean, I was hoping we could get Alfred Molina to come in. As Doc Ock. Oh, he was fantastic in Chocolat. Okay, now you know what, sir? I'm gonna need you to go watch five Spider-Man movies real quick, okay? Oh, really? Yeah, the impact. None of this is gonna land the way I wanted to if you haven't watched those five movies. Five movie. Okay. All right. Please, it's you gotta do it. You gotta do it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> so, what did you think? Yeah, you know, I mean, some of that was great. What was that old jazz thing about, though? Oh, we don't need to talk about that. Okay, now listen to this. I'm thinking we get Willem Dafoe back as Green Goblin. Oh, he's from the first movie. Oh, there's the reaction I'm going for. I was also thinking we get Thomas Hayden Church back as Sandman and Reese Ifans back as Lizard. Well, he's from the third movie, and he's from the first movie of the rebooted movie. Oh, That's God. right, and also Jamie Foxx as Electro. He's from the second movie of the rebooted movie. He sure. <laughs> Is, sir. They're all from the other movies. All the references. Amazing. Hey, what about James Franco? Should we get him back? Eh. Dane DeHaan? Meh. Well, okay then. So what happens in the movie? Well, okay. So it turns out that being the most famous person in the world has kind of ruined Peter and MJ and Ned's chances of getting into MIT. Oh, okay. And so Peter feels bad, so he goes to see Doctor Strange to ask him to cast a spell to make everybody forget he's Spider-Man. And how does that go? Oh, not well, sir. See, he starts the spell, but then Peter keeps asking for little changes to it, like he wants MJ to remember him. So Doctor Strange takes a minute to just talk it through? No, 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 no. God, no. Why not? So the movie can happen. Oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> so the spell gets messed up, and then people from other universes that know that Peter Parker is Spider-Man start popping into this universe. Wait, did Electro know that Peter Parker was Spider-Man? No, he didn't. So... Okay. So eventually, <laughs> Peter's gonna capture all these villains, and they're gonna kind of recap each other's movies to each other. A bunch of inside jokes for fans. Very fun. And then Doctor Strange makes this box that'll send everybody back to their universes. Oh, great. But the thing is, they all got zapped over here pretty much right before they died. So Peter's like, well, we have to help them. We can't just send them to die. Sure you uh, can. But Doctor Strange says no, so Peter steals the box, and then Doctor Strange brings him into the mirror dimension, which he controls. Oh, man, it's gonna be tough for Peter to beat Strange in there. Actually, it's going to be super easy. Barely, Barely an inconvenience. inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, because see, math. Oh, math. <laughs> yeah, math. That works, kind of. Okay. So what else is going to happen? Well, there's kind of this consensus on the internet that everybody's tired of seeing Uncle Ben die in Spider-Man projects. That does seem to happen a lot. Yeah, so I figure we don't do that. Right. And instead, we kill Aunt May. Oh, no. no. The Green Goblin's going to blow her up, and right before she dies, she's going to tell Peter, you know, with great power must also come great response. Mm, yeah, that lesson just doesn't carry the same <laughs> way with one of your parents' siblings violently dying. Very true, sir. So anyway, then Ned is going to use Doctor Strange's sling ring to try and open a portal to get Peter. And that's a thing he can do? Yeah, we're going to throw in a line about him having magic in his family so he can do portals now. Wow. Well, they didn't take okay, much so training. just kind of crapping on Doctor Strange's abilities in this movie a little bit, huh? <laughs> a little, yeah. Well, okay then. And so then these portals open and that's how these other Peter Parkers come in, the ones played by Toby McGuire and Andrew Garfield. Oh, wow, wow, wow. 
Wow. Yeah, it's gonna be very nostalgic, sir. So I guess they each get like a cameo line, like a little jokey thing. Oh no, they're like in the movie now. Oh, they are? Yeah, full on characters with effects on the plot and everything. Okay, well that's not usually how these things go. Yeah, no, well see this movie's kind of a love letter to the Spider-Man movies and their fans. Aw, that's nice, I like that. Yeah, a massively lucrative showcase of our intellectual property. Yeah, okay, the first <laughs> thing they said sounded a lot more romantic though. Cashing in on nostalgia, but done right. You had it the first time. Oh, okay, gotcha. So does Ned keep making portals? No, he stops at two. I mean, why not keep trying? They could get Tom Holland. They could see how many Spider-Mans they can get. The scene has served its purpose, sir. We gotta move on. Oh, okay. So anyway, then eventually all the spider guys are gonna get together and do some science to make cures for the bad guys. Very cool. And then there's gonna be this big fight where they try to cure them all. Amazing, man. It's gonna be a little hard to keep track of which Spider-Man's which during the big fight, huh? Actually, yeah, a little. <laughs> uh, eventually, Tom Holland is so mad that he's got about me. to kill Green. Green Goblin. Oh boy. But Tobey Maguire steps in and stops him using nothing but his wise face. And then he gets stabbed. Oh no, is he okay? Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> all right. All right. It was kind of rude of you emotionally, you know. Well, so none of their spidey senses went off when he was about to get stabbed? No, because they were having a moment. Spidey senses don't work if you're having a moment. Mm. Oh, good oh. to know. So then Terrible it looks power. like all these other people are about to come in from other dimensions. It's about to be nuts. Oh, no. So Tom Holland, Peter, has Doctor Strange cast a new spell where everybody forgets about Peter Parker entirely. Oh, very selfless. It is. So then all the villains get sent back to their universes, all cured and whatnot. Are they being sent back to just a second before they're killed? Yeah. Yeah, maybe. So anyway, then it's all very sad for Tom Holland Spider-Man because MJ and Ned don't remember him. Oh, that's sad. Yeah, and he's about to go explain the whole situation to them, but then he realizes they're probably better off without him in their lives. Very See? sad. It is, yeah. So he's got to get an apartment all by himself and start over. So he still has like a social security number, like the government still remembers him. Uh, <laughs> birth certificate, maybe. What happens with all the videos and news reports about him being Spider-Man? I guess the memory spell works on computer memory also. What about Flash's book that he wrote? Okay, look, sir, I'm gonna need you to get all the way off my back about this memory <laughs> spell, okay? We're going for a clean slate kind of thing here. Oh, okay, let me get off of that thing. Thanks, so what do you think? Oh, it sounds like a really good time, you know? I'm just, how are we gonna market this without spoiling all this crazy stuff? Uh... Leaks? Oh, leaks, yeah, that'll work, let's do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. Leaks suck. I'm just gonna throw that out there right now. Yeah, don't ruin the movie. Please don't. So if, if you had to sum up a moral for this movie, you could sum it up in a question. You didn't think that one through, did you? <laughs> nope. And that's kind of what we talked about last time when we were watching uh, Far From Home. You shouldn't be letting Peter Parker make decisions. He's a teenager. Exactly. You know, granted, I can see the value in his idea. Because you have a wizard who can manipulate people's memories like that. Sure. Sure, it seems like a sensible course of action. But actually talk over the whole plan instead of trying to come up with it on the fly. While and, he's doing the yeah, damn Yeah, while he's thing. doing the magic. And you probably wouldn't be in this mess. And for that matter, you know, Doctor Strange should have known better too and just ended the thing once he realized Pit Parker didn't know what he wanted. But I mean, this all takes place because so that the movie could happen, you know? Don't no, you're wrong. It's really cool having all the Spider-Mans there. Sure. It's cool seeing some of the old villains because I really liked Doc Ock and Green Goblin and guys like that. But at the same time, you know, you're really kind of demonstrating why Peter Parker is not hero material by letting him get into these situations. Fair enough. Especially this Peter Parker. He's a lot more childish than the other two from the previous ones, in my opinion. Because he, the way he kept coming up with all these things on the fly, that might be how he actually is in the comics. I don't know. But, you know, you kept coming up with these things. You're really kind of your own worst enemy in this moment. Yeah, just a little bit. But you're right, you know, he is his own worst enemy there. The fact, too, that he keeps trying to save these other villains, like, dude, your whole existence is in danger here, and you're worried about everybody else. Like, why? What does it matter? I don't know. Now they know about you, but nobody seems to care. Yeah. You know? I, I mean, granted, this is, I don't know if this is before or after Loki, but, you know, once you get into the whole multiverse and timelines and stuff, it gets kind of weird because you have to accept the fact that in the other timelines, things aren't going to play out the way that you want. People are going to die, some people are going to live who probably shouldn't. You're worrying about the multiverse when really the only thing you should be worried about is yourself at the moment. Yeah, but MJ couldn't get an MIT. What, what else are we going to do here? We have to screw up the entire multiverse. So then wouldn't it just been easier to have Doctor Strange get her into MIT? <laughs> we had a movie to watch, all right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. There are flaws with the whole idea here. You know what? Yeah. <laughs> There are much easier fixes to the problem. Right. He tried to go for like the least efficient way of solving all this and it didn't work. 
<sighs> oh well. Moving on. Yep. Bam, I don't have much to say about this. You know, it actually wasn't that bad a movie. I think a lot of people actually really enjoyed this. So. Say, I still enjoy Spider Man. You know, we still a screw up though. Still not my favorite. <laughs> so, but we're gonna take it on to the next one here, guys. As always, be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bells, take a look at us on those things up there, and like and subscribe again. And until next time, this is Cocktail Flicks. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. And we'll catch you on the flip side. Cheers to you, fam. Cheers to you, Dan. Cheers to you, Joe. Later, guys. Bye.